and Reverend Rich Lang is from University Temple Church and he is here. We asked him to come come breathe a little bit of fire. It's one he's he's good at. So let's see people in the in the front rows might want to move back just a little bit. Let's welcome Rich Lang. It's um you know, it's such a gorgeous day. It's it's um, it's hard to uh, to want to talk about a serious problem. And as much as I appreciated the councilman, um, one of the things I can say on behalf of the church is, um, you know, people of goodwill, people from faith communities. Uh, what we try to do is live a life of a helping hand to others, but it's not enough. Um, we live in a country of 300 million people. And we need the systems and the institutions. We need the we the people, the body politic. We need our leaders to, to lead. We need them to uh, open, up, open up the commonwealth of our country in order to have a safe, sane, sober society that's worth living in. And that's the problem today, is that there's plenty of wealth. There's plenty of resources. But the distribution of those resources um, is the issue, and that's a moral issue. Today, um, as I was thinking about coming here, I was thinking about what I wanted to say, and I and I went for a walk around the campus at uh, UW, um, and it's you know it's a drop dead gorgeous day, and I came back into my office and I got on the web and um, started reading an article about what's happening to the Earth, and all across the uh, the western part of of, um, of our country, there is a huge huge drought that's beginning to, to kill the crops. Uh, global warming is no longer a theory, no matter what the fascists and the Republicans might want to say about it, but it's at hand. And the earth itself is starting to, to bake. It's starting to warm up. And the crops, this harvest season, are being diminished, which means that food prices are going to rise. And if the weather continues to be warmer than normal through the course of the winter, what that means is the insects will begin to breed longer. And next year, what were once just nuisances will become swarms. Next year will be even worse as we begin to live our future in the new normal of a continual environmental crisis. And here's the thing. We know how to fix the crisis. But the owners who have caused this crisis simply won't let us. They're too invested in military crusades that continue to reap market benefits for their own bank accounts. They are too committed to exploitation, to rape, to pillage, to destruction of the habitat that we call Earth, this sacred home that has an abundance for us all. The owners are not going to solve the crisis that besets us as a people will not solve the crisis of the earth because all they can think about is their own profit and their own pillage. And so when it comes to the local level and homelessness in this city, the homeless have been living in a perpetual crisis for years. And solving homelessness is not a great mystery either. We've actually done it before as a country. It could be done again. Housing health care, employment. These are three basic necessities that are crucial and necessary for moral public policy. But we live in a really immoral time. Those necessities, housing, health care, and employment are not in the interest of those who own the politicians. And that's our first clarity that I think we need to keep continually repeating to ourselves over and over and over again, the owners are not us. The owners don't care about us. The owners wish we would just go away and shut up. And the us that I'm talking about is anybody who still actually has a shred of moral decency in their character. I'm talking about anybody who can still feel responsible for their neighbor in need because the owners don't feel responsible. All the owners feel is their fear of losing out on a potential profit. 
a potential windfall, a potential benefit to themselves and their own small family. All the owners feel is their own satiable desire to piggy up to the table and pork out more and more and more. For the owners, the problem of homelessness comes down to one thing. How to eradicate not it, but them. How to sweep them off the streets and out of the public eye. How to get rid of them at little or no cost and no effort on their part. We cannot look to the owners to save us or even to help us. And because the owners own our leaders in our institutions, the politicians are theirs. The leaders of institutions are theirs. We cannot hope that the political process will save us. We cannot hope that the business community will grow a heart and save us. We cannot hope that even institutions like the church can save us. We cannot realistically expect Olympia or King County or the city of Seattle to suddenly care that every citizen has a right to a roof over their head, free medical care for every person, or a job for all of us who need to work. Such basic humanity is no longer possible given the atrophied hearts and minds of those who own this nation. And so we are left to ourselves. What we need is a revolution rooted in a morality that every person is sacred and the land, our habitat, is sacred. And this is not merely a warm, fuzzy revolution of our heart or our intention, but it is also a revolution in our public and political behavior. The age of capitalism has run its course. The disparity of wealth, with a few having abundant opulence and the many struggling, and the left out increasingly growing, is a blasphemy to the ideals that were once at the heart of this nation. Something that I like to continually lift up, because this belongs to all of us. For years and years ago, in the Declaration of Independence from King George and the tyranny of England and of English corporations, we declared at one time, and this was idealism, but we declared at one time that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that everyone is created equal, that everyone is endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the pursuit of happiness was not the individual pursuit. Happiness was more of a commonwealth so that all had enough to survive and thrive. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among us, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, us. And that whenever, and here's the important part of our heritage, that whenever any form of government, including today's government, becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish that government and to institute new government laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect our safety and happiness. This is our right as Americans. So we'll start talking when they start listening, but they won't listen until we make them. They don't understand anything until what they own is threatened. Our gathering today is a rallying point. Our march tomorrow, a protest of grievance. But these are just the, the baby steps of a movement. What is needed is a complete moral revolution. The owners need to be tossed off their thrones of wealth. And we, the people, must become sovereign. A roof over every head must become a right, not a request. Health care of all must become a reality, not a vision. And a job, which is a way to make a living and contribute to the commonwealth so that everyone survives and thrives, must become commonplace, not a scarce competition. Until these basic human freedoms are embraced by the owners, we the people have the responsibility to continually disturb the owners 
to disrupt their plans, to unsettle their mechanisms of control, to expose them as frauds, to frustrate their agendas of domination. We, the people, have the moral responsibility to withdraw our consent from their governance. The age of rapacious capitalism is over. The age of a social morality, the age of commonwealth, not segregated wealth, has begun. And who we have to depend on is ourselves. And that is enough. Let us make it so. Hours from the consent.